All right, ladies and gentlemen, these are your notes for classifying matter, and this is actually going to be part one of two. So there'll be a second video that we'll do next week. So these notes will be continued on. So if you remember from the other day, when we classify something, that means to put it into groups. Okay? And we classify objects, things, all the time because it helps us to to organize, to be to be more organized and to better understand things. All right. If you remember, matter, very technical scientific term, it really just means stuff. Matter is anything in the universe that has mass and takes up space. So stuff, so air, water, people, plants, um, your video game console, your Chromebook, the, the chair you're sitting in, it's all, it's all matter, it's all stuff, okay? So really when we talk about classifying matter, what we're really talking about doing is just putting stuff into groups, okay? Now, we're gonna look at, in this video, three specific ways that we're gonna do that, okay? The first way we're gonna look at is physical, I can spell physical, physical state. And this is just a really fancy way of saying, is it a solid, is it a liquid, or is it a gas? And that's really it. Like, that's really what physical state is. Now, if you were in um, my homeroom class, we talked about a fourth physical state called plasma. You do not need to know about plasma right now. That was just something fun that we did. For right now, all you need to know is solid, liquid, gas. If you're not sure what plasma is, but you're interested, um, come talk to me. It's really cool. And if you're not worried about it, don't worry about it, because you don't need to know plasma right now, okay? All you need to know is solid, liquid, gas. All right, I want you to take a couple of minutes, make sure you have this written in your notes. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, so physical state, that's the first way that we, were, we are going to classify. All right, the next way that we are going to classify or to put stuff into groups Second way is magnetism. Okay. And this is really just a very simple question. It's just an it's just a yes or no to the question is it magnetic? Yes or no? Now, I'm gonna say something right now that you may or may not know. There are actually only three magnetic metals. Not all metal is magnetic. There are actually only three, three very specific metals. Before I write them down, just in your head, take a guess at what one might be. Got a guess in your head? All right, let's see if you're right. So the first one, and it's the most common, is iron. Iron is magnetic. Now, if you said steel, you're partially right. Steel is actually made from iron. So the reason why steel is magnetic is because iron is magnetic. A lot of times we mix metals together to make stronger substances. They're called alloys. And steel is an iron alloy. All right, but iron is magnetic. The next one is cobalt. And then the final one is nickel. Now, if nickel sounds familiar, if you think, wait a minute, isn't that like five cents? Yeah. So five cent pieces, nickels, used to be made out of the metal nickel. 
They were pure nickel, actually. Um, they're not anymore because nickel is, uh, is a little bit more of a precious metal. And so those coins are not made out of nickel anymore. But they used to be, and that's where they got their name. But iron, cobalt, and nickel are the only three magnetic metals. And when you do your lab work this week, you're going to see that there are other metals, yes, but they're not magnetic. Only iron, cobalt, and nickel are. Make sure this is down in your notes as well. All right, the last way that we are going to classify matter, and I'm going to erase the stuff in the groups just because I need the space. The last way we're going to classify matter is by relative density. Now, that kind of sounds like a complicated science word, but it's actually a really simple concept. So this word relative means two things. You're comparing two things, okay? So if I said, hey, tell me one of your relatives, you're going to tell me the name of a person that you have a connection with, okay? Whether it's a mom or dad or brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whatever, all right? Density, this is the one that's a little bit harder, all right? Density is actually a measurement of how closely packed together the molecules inside a substance are. Now, even that word molecule may be unfamiliar to you, okay? But if you can imagine, the molecules are all the itty-bitty, teeny, tiny pieces that make up a substance, all right? And density is the measurement of how close those things are together. So if we have two substances, and let's just say this is water. And then we have another substance, and the molecules are more spread out. And let's say this is air. Relative density is just really this simple question. Does it sink or float? So even though this sounds really complicated, and even density itself is pretty complicated as well, but all you really need to know is, does it sink or does it float? So if we're thinking about water and air, and we look out at Bailey Lake, what do we see? Well, we see the water, and then there's the air on top of it. So the air is less dense than the water, and so the air is less dense because it floats, and the water is more dense because it sinks. All right, let's look at another example. So let's say we had a cup The cup was empty. And we had a container of oil and a container of water. Now when you do your lab work, you're actually going to see what would happen. But let's say that we poured the water in. We poured the oil in. 
to know the relative density, which one would be more or less dense, all we would need to observe is which one's on the bottom and which one's on the top. Now you may already know the answer to this question, but if you don't, you're going to find out when we do our lab work. All right, make sure this is written in your notes. All right, we're going to finish these notes when you actually do your lab, and you guys are going to answer this question, which is more dense? oil or water. You'll have some other things to answer as well.